This is the Bar Stewards Enquiry. You are talking absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. In, in what way? You are an underachiever in life. You were, I saved your bacon one time. You were gone. You had to that well. I couldn't save you. I, I said, oh, no, but you said the right thing. But well, that's why you don't know anything about racing, John. I, I didn't say I do. Right? I'm saying that... What, what have you contributed to racing? You are one of these take-out merchants. Take out all you can. Bonjour. Hello. And a warm welcome to Bastard's Inquiry listeners. It's the weekend preview from La France, where we're bringing you Longchamp on Sunday and we're bringing you Newmarket and uh, the television races at Ascot with a two year old trophy up the local as a preview, an extensive preview for this weekend's racing. So, will it be Wyoming Uni? Neil Poin in the arc. It looks that way with just Ralph Beckett represented with that blue stocking. We've got a very poor representation level this year. But joining me to chew all that fat later on, and of course, Saturday's racing, is Jack Beach, Nick Davis, and John Lang. Good evening, chaps. Bonjour. Bonjour, mes amis. Well, Comment ça va? Je ne sais ça quoi. Va, man. Ça va très shit. <laughs> Il <laughs> pleut. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know all of these French, which is great, isn't it? Right, it's said in Yorkshire accent, you know, it's terrible, isn't it? It sounds terrible. Onwards and upwards, because it's a busy show, and we've got absolutely shedfuls to get through. So we're going to start off tomorrow. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, because they're really covering the one race. We'll start off at the local, at the, the two-year-old trophy race. A race close to John's heart, this one, as he's staring at two people on stilts with female bodily parts, John, at eye level. <laughs> I nearly booked a ticket after that. <laughs> yeah, this, this is where it all kicks off tomorrow at the local. Still women, all sorts, there for two-year-old trophy day. John, I know you've got plenty to say about the local this, this yeah. year, so you can k- kick us all off. Well, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, well, there's a, <laughs> a recurring track bias at the local, and... Uh, at the last meeting, it was as bad as I've seen it, to be honest. And the stick reading for tomorrow, like the far side compared to the near side, is the biggest disparity I've ever seen in stick readings. I think if you if you if you fancy him playing high draw on on the straight course, you might as well also back yourself to fuck Kylie and Danny in a double team <laughs> affair. <laughs> Because basically you've got no fucking chance. It's that bad. As as for the big one, uh, such as it is, I mean, I think John, the big one's pushing it a bit these days, but uh, I'll make it between Francisco's pace, Edging Cateley's, I was having a good season again with his expensive two-year-olds, and Eve's billboard star, who are the furthest from the stands, Amongst the fancied horses, Billboard Star seems capable of doing it on any sort of ground. As does Francisco's pace, run pretty well at Adoc over five last week. Nothing much to like about either. I think if you decide which one you want to win the most on and save your stake with the other, you should be all right. Yeah, good stuff, mate. I mean, Billboard Star uh, claims are obvious. Only, only thing I would say, I can't stand Charles Bishop. He's, I think he's useless. He'll not have ruined red car many times. And the daft idiot might just plough straight up centre for all we know. <laughs> I'd like to know how many times Charles Bishop has been at red car. Can't be many. So that'd be one. He won, he won one. it three years ago. Did it? Well, yeah. he? might actually know. I actually know what he's doing there. Chipotle. Same connection. Oh, yeah. Chipotle. There's a, yeah. There's a rare Brocklesby two year old trophy double that. Don't often see that, do you? They're yeah. usually dead by now. That's really true. Mm. Yeah, indeed. Good fact, Jack. <laughs> so, what's Jack thinking on the race? Agree with John on the whole. I think Billboard Star's the obvious one, but you know, still three to one. I don't think that's a bad price, to be honest. I'd probably be more like twos. Um, these have got kind of seven or eight pounds minimum to find. Not to say they can't, but it's it's pretty consistent animal. This and you know, ran all right on the heavy stuff last time out in the Mill Reef. Um, good good seconds on the uh, good to soft in the July stakes. So be the horse to beat for me. I think if there's one improver that 
might be lurking. Um, annoyingly, it's been quite well back today, and that's probably because of John's draw angle. Uh, Northern Ticker, the Dodds horse, done very little wrong. Win on soft last time out at Carlisle. Wasn't much. It was a pretty lowly novice, but I think this horse could still be improving. And, you know, if it can grab that rail and Mole Rennan gets sort of box seat or, or next to, it's it's probably between between that and, and Billboard Star for me. And, and as John said, the Keatley horse. But um, shame about Uncle Don. Really do like the horse, but just ground and no chance from 13 i'm afraid one other thing i'd point out to punters tomorrow is that there's a very well it's a stiff one actually it's a, it's a 16 mile an hour direct bang behind tail so that's not really going to help the back runners at red car because as we know a red car generally up five six furlong races are hugely front end especially when with a tailwind behind so again focus your punting on what you think is going to be handing Uncle Dom. If he's to win it, he's got to defy a tricky draw and a tailwind if he's going to come like he did last time from right off the pace. Whether that's the case and they manage to get him handier, I don't know. But it's a problem if you're looking to back Uncle Dom at those sort of prices with that in mind. Nick? I probably, I mean, I wouldn't go strong on the race. I'd probably just do a billboard uh, Francisco's reverse forecast or something like that with the emphasis more on billboard. As you know, with these two-year-olds, you know, Bill Ball can go over the top. It, it, you know, it, he's only had a, he had a, he had a sort of des- uh, you know hardest race on on very soft ground. So you just don't know. But if you want to play the race, just play it as a higher reward, higher risk job. Bill Ball and Francisco's reverse. Or if you like yeah. Northern Ticker, Bill Ball Northern Ticker. That's the way I play it. Yeah, good stuff. Small stakes to win a nice few quid. We don't mind that. Going to Newmarket then, where it appears to be some kind of Phillies day. Mm. Sun Chariot and all sorts and Premier Phillies handicap. That's where we're starting. 50 grand on a race. Nick loves the, the three-year-old Phillies. <laughs> Nick, I'm going to start with you on this one. It's the 10 furlong race at 1.30. Min Hoona heads the market. An edge bet last time. Well, hey, we'll get that plug in. For William Haggis, obviously up to a lot in the weights, but still heads the market at just shorter than threes. Nick, any view here? Uh, not a lot. I've just mentioned that Canoodle has got a fantastic record here. It's uh, new market. It's one one two four one three six zero. It's one of the places to catch it at. I've, unfortunately, I forgot when we run at York <laughs> when it won. But yeah. no, it's not really my type of race. I'll leave it to you more and more work. Just just be aware she has a she runs really well here, and that's my only take on the race. Okay, okay, thank you. Jack? We certainly like Minhuna, don't we? Eight pounds on the face of it was probably a little bit steep for, for that effort last time out. Um, only beaten Cheshire Dancer, but, you know, had her well held. But I think they're wise to the fact that the shirt knows he, he's got quite a lot up his sleeve with this one. Um, I think she could be at least 90. So 86 is probably fine. And 11 or 4, 3 to 1 is, is probably about right. Horse I like is Noisy Jazz. Uh, jockey booking I don't like is Holly Doyle because she's a keen goer. She settled a bit better last time out at Windsor, I thought, and was probably unlucky not to win. But if she starts pulling hard again, you've not got the right pilot to, to help you there. So that kind of put me off that one. Um, yeah, conclusion, probably not a betting race for me. This is a little tricky for me. I did, I did li- really want to try and dig one out here because you've got a race where you can find one at a price maybe or something with a bit of value. I think the, the fab is the right fab, but it is the right sort of price. I'd be about that sort of price. Noisy jazz I find interesting like you do. Just basically, on the debut win, it was very impressive over this track. I know we're two furlongs further, but being a relative of Big Orange, etc., she is a bit keen, but she is bred to, to get a trip, and she could be still unexposed. I thought it was bad placing to go to the gal tree second time up. Mm. I didn't like that call at all. And she wasn't a big price in the gal tree, 17 to 2. D'Souza, she went a bit mental in the race and just didn't work. Back at Windsor, it was a better effort. She's back on track. But I think if someone's got a gun to my head and you've got to play on the race, I've got, I'm going to back Noisy Jazz at 10s. John? I can't really add anything to this because I simply couldn't face yet another Phillies handicap. <laughs> <laughs> Been a few of them, haven't they? They're starting to depress me. There's about three on Saturday, isn't there, at Newmarket? Oh, man, honest to God, I don't know what the... It's the entire card by one. Mm. We've got the auction race that we're going to cover in a minute, 2.05. 240 is obviously Sun Chariot. 315 is another Phillies handicap. 
The 350 is a maiden, so all right, fair enough. And then the 425 is a maiden. And the five o'clock, it's a finish. It's a Phillies handicap. There you go. It's Sun Chariot Day. It's it's one for the ladies. John, you've got really much opinion on the race, I gather from that. Zero. Good enough for me. Right, okay. So we're not helping you too much so far, but I'm sure we've got some good ideas and bets to come. And before we come on to the next race, I must also stress that whilst in a tailwind, there is no real obstacles in your way if you want to be on the front end so you might see a similar pattern to the last meeting where you, you did quite well if you were sort of on the front end so just bear that in mind when you're punting because new market is one of them effective tracks like that simcock if you're listening right <laughs> brian boy is market leader in the 205 race i'll kick us off here i'd love to get some info before i played on it so i might not be much help here either but we backed brighton boy last time we like brighton boy as a horse he is progressive I've, I, I can see it. they'll go handy with him pieces to help him concentrate a little better i think that's what he needs he's very solid but the one that interests me was twaffy Brighton Boy's got to give her five pounds. This filly beat Arabian Dusk on debut at Doncaster. She was more clued up than Arabian Dusk, so it might be a bit flattering. But still, this is a filly that then obviously went to Ascot, Royal Ascot next time. I don't know about her physical development. I don't know if she's gone on much from that. And there's two ways of looking at that. She could just run up to absolutely nothing or... She could be a lot better than 90. Which I think she might be. I, I think there's still time for her yet to prove that she's better than that rating. So whilst I'm only covering the first two in the market here, I thought they were the two to concentrate on. Nick? I thought the pace, most a lot of the pace was a higher. That will suit to Archie then, probably. As you see, I'm not I'm not a great fan of two-year-olds, but top one goes from the front, doesn't it? Twelve egg goes from the front, so... Depends. You don't know. Well, you you don't know. The stands place was the the, uh, the far side was the place to be last uh, last time, wasn't it? A new market. They haven't changed course, have they? The no, they because they race on this course and they change it next week, don't they? For the Zazarowicz meeting, yeah. they come stand side course for that. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't it wouldn't be my cup of tea, to your eyes. But looking at all the pace, my all, all the pace during the race, I think it's high. But that's all. That's all. That's probably my only contribution to this. I wouldn't have a lot of, lot of opinions about it. Yep. John, I agree entirely about Twaffy. Um, I thought she was a lovely shot when she won on debut. I was really impressed with her. It was all a bit much for a second time up in the Albany at Ascot. I mean, one worry would be that. They go out there with the intention of settling her and the messing about and whatever you're trying to get her back on in behind or whatever rather than just letting her flow. That said, I think the new look Doyle La Femme is probably better equipped now that at any stage of the season to deal with one of these. So I'm kind of overcoming my worries about her at the moment. So I think I'm happy to rock along with Archie. She uh, she listed to the show, John? I would doubt it very much. She probably got a <laughs> million and one better things to do. She might have been sent an audio or something. Are you, like, giving her a right curtain? <laughs> <laughs> I know that has gone off, by the way. I know that certain people have been sent things by other people that don't listen, <laughs> but have, have been sent things said on the show, and that they have listened That must to be it, why so. half of them have blocked me. Even Mr. Gosden. Jack's been blocked by half a, half a race in Twitter. <laughs> he's getting fed up, the poor lad. He's, he's trying to talk to people, and then all of a sudden he's he's coming up with a big, you cannot see this person's tweets. Mm. Poor Jacker. We've got John's opinion, mine and Nick's. So where's Jack on this one? I couldn't disagree with Twafig, really. Uh, I presume there was some kind of setback being off since the um, since the Albany, but, um, but she had plenty of time to get over that. And they did have the option of going up to John's local, but didn't fancy it. So... Keeping keeping her closer to home. Um, I'll give one mention to a bit of a flyer, and I think this might go off a massive price because it's just totally unsexy. The Candyman's May Encounter. Now, the Candyman is having a terrible old year of things. Um, I'm told he's got a, a mould problem in the yard, which has contributed to a lot of it. But I thought this ran quite nicely on, on debut at Salisbury. Very green, but I thought 
finished off her race quite nicely to, to suggest there could be a, a little bit more to come from her. She's she obviously, as Nick pointed out, possibly drawn in the right place uh, at 20. Um, she probably will be coming from, from the back, so might might end up having traffic problems. But I can just see it's about 20, what, 20 to 1 mark now. I wouldn't be in a rush to back it. You've got Liam Wright, who I presume is only on because he is the only bugger who can do 8-2. But yeah, I think I think this one could could run quite a nice race for uh, for the candy man. Mm, interesting at a price. Like you say, interesting the rumours there uh, for our listeners, what you say about the Candyman Yard. Jake. Yeah, that was, all, that was all so, alleged before he tries to sue me when he probably gets sent this clip tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I know, all owners dropping out at Yard. Why are they dropping out? What <laughs> bastards have sent this? You've got mould up your arse, haven't you? <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. We should be sort of claxoning this because three of us have sort of agreed on this in Swafi. But I'm going to say, suggest we don't because I also listened to what Nick said about the draw for this race in terms of it, the last meeting, the stands was just not the place to be. So that's probably worth bearing in mind when sticking your bollocks in the frying pan, so to speak. So I think we'd probably leave this in terms of finding out. Obviously, we'll try and come with a lucky at the end of the show. So we might bear that in mind, chaps, before we stick that one in 240 then the big phillies event the sun chariot used to used to be run over a mile and a quarter didn't it john yeah back in the day when it it was an interesting race yeah (laughs) (laughs) obviously i'm a bit surprised to see tam farner as fav Mm. given that we know how she's ridden and the, and she'll be ridden to settle. I, I don't like that sort of tactic on the Ravelry Mile at any time, unless you're guaranteed an absolute breakneck pace, which in all fairness, they don't look to be a lot on here. I can I mean, again, you don't know the well-being. That This is the problem. You've got Nashua coming back after, what, six months off with a doyle on, on board, and you just don't know whether she still wants to do it. That's the thing with Phillies. If they're not in that mood, it doesn't really matter if they're at £10 below something else because if Nashua doesn't want to do it, then she ain't doing it. I don't know. I ain't got the info on it. So Nashua would be my choice. I think she could, she's going to get the right ride here. But as for well-being... Let's face it, Gosden Yard this year, not done the best. Not a, not a fantastic year. They had a winner the other day, but apart from that, they've been, I think they went about 20, 30 runners without a winner, mm. didn't they? Mm. Yeah, they've not been in the mark this year. In fact, I'll go as far as to say, they, they sort of, they're a glorified kilt this year. Some of their horses aren't backed up. Some of their horses have just ran dreadful at some point for, for no apparent reason. Don't know. It just doesn't seem the same consistent what you'd expect from that yard. But I, I'd just I'd take a pot shot at Nashville without being confident because I don't know the horse's well being, John. Similar to yourself, I'm, I'm not keen on Tam Farner because of how she's going to be ridden. And I can't actually say a lot of pace on here. Sam James might write the bullet and go on if Holly, Holly Doyle doesn't. Yeah. That, I think that's the key to the race. If Holly Doyle goes on, I think Nashua can win this. Gosden sending her out there with orders to take a lead and what have you, and getting her into a scrap with Nashua, she'll get it beat. And Darnation will then win because of the rest. Emalka and Say the Fire don't like the ground, and in Spiral has turned into a twat. <laughs> she has this year. She's... Well, that's another thing with her. Again, you're coming back to Rowley Mile, she's been missing the kick. And again, they're just going to sit last with her, probably with Tam Farner. That first two in betting, and it's not. not Keeping her going you know. after that mocking, you must be one of the worst decisions in racing, don't you think? Yeah, I agree with you. I think because she's missing the kick, she's that's her saying, I can't be arsed. But this is where, it, as we did lots of Friday shows in the past, this is where egg on face comes back to haunt us. But, but no, it's like Emily Upjohn. It's one of them things where she just looks a shadow of of what she was. Jack? I'm amazed with Inspiral. They've not tried any headgear at any point. I I presume maybe they did at home and nothing happened sort of thing. But, I mean, goston has got a particularly good record with first time out headgear as well. So, you know, given the tendency to keep missing the break, the the race really hinges on what you get with her. I mean, she's, she's pretty pretty unmatchable in Phillies and Mare's company. She's only been beaten once um, in the Falmouth a couple of years ago when she was very short that day. And um, outside of that, you know, she, she's won 
several of these. So depends what you're going to get. But I, I kind of look through the field and I just talk myself out of all of them. Tam Fana, I completely agree. Not sure on, on sort of the ride. El Malka, the same category, needs a good pace. See the fire, I think a mile is sharp enough for her. I quite liked her up to the nine. I think she'll be a better horse at 10, actually. And yep. and she, I think she needs a rail as well. If you look at her run in the Phillies mile last year, she hung all over the gaff um, and, and kind of chucked it in the end. So I'm not sure this, this course and distance is for her. Nashua, I've got a feeling they probably probably looking at something like the Breeders' Cup, Phillies and Mare's turf, and this might just be a sighter. If she does kind of press on and, and try and win, I can see her just blowing up, you know, late doors. But we'll, we'll see what she looks like beforehand to get an idea on condition. So, yeah, you know, it could be a case of Darnation goes on and, and might, you know, at least from a back-to-lay perspective, you're probably getting some money for nothing there, aren't you? So, um, yeah, I've told you an awful lot about nothing there, but I, I, nothing nothing stood out from a bet from my perspective. No, it's like us all... It's very tough. This is thing. It's no good telling punters we think this is a good thing when we, we're not dipping our bread ourselves. So, Nick, have you anything to add on the Sun Chariot? It's who whoever gets the best ride, isn't it? I totally... Uh, I'm, in, I'm in agreement with you about... You look in the thing and nothing much stands up. I mean, in Spiral's turn of foot, is probably... The best there is in this field. She can, I mean, you, you, you've seen her go, and I don't know how. I think it'll end up good. The soft, there's this sun in the morning. You, you, you see how, how how it dried up last week. It was heavy yep. on heavy on the Thursday, and it was actually good. The soft. Some people even calling it. Some race readers were calling it nearly good by the time of the Cambridgeshire. So that yeah. was amazing. And there's you know the sun all morning. I've got tomorrow. And a moderate breeze. We could end up with nearly good, 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 the soft going again. It's, it's whoever, I mean, I'm not going to have a bet, but whoever gets the best ride. And, and I think Inspiral's got the best turn of foot, but I'm not going to play. <laughs> no, I, like, like I said, we've got to be honest on the show. We can't just cut with things just because everyone loves a bet. And obviously you don't know what I think. I don't know what Jack thinks, Nick thinks or John thinks before we come on this show. So it is what it is. We'll give you the best bets and, and hopefully we'll pull you out of the fire with our best bets as we go through the cards. So nothing a lot to shout about so far at HQ as we switch now to R. Scott for their four on television. And we be, begin with the Rouse stakes where we see the Philly Relief Rally head the market at wrist five to four for the shirt. And Kieran Fallon, Jack. Another boring opinion for me, but I, I think she's the, the right favourite. Um, I think she'll handle the ground. She seemed to go on it okay. Last time out at Newbury when it was pretty testing there, she, she's, you know, the, the best best horse in the race at weights and measures. She quite comfortably disposed a beautiful diamond earlier on in the season. I don't see any major reason for that form to be overturned. Democracy Dilemma, I don't think a stiff five is going to suit him very much. Mia Harris, I don't think, is trained on. So then you're looking at Ado McGuinnesses, who, uh, who could, you know, just... I mean, this is a poor contest. I know that's like the reverse of Nick's theory about Irish sprinters and, and English sprinters, but probably hasn't got loads to find in fairness and, and, and the case to be maybe a little bit overs around the seven mark. But um, yeah, I'm not giving people much here, but it's just a, it's a tough betting proposition, this, and nothing really appeals. Mm, agreed. What a terrible <laughs> show this is. Turn it off. <laughs> Relief rally. The same reasons as you, Jack, but... At five to four. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jesus. Giving you nothing there. Yeah, yeah. It's the Masai Mara and the Lions of Feeding <laughs> and the Hyenas, and then me and Jack walk along starving. All we see is bones. And that's it. Five to four for Relief Rally. That's what it feels like there if we're fancying that. The overnight Billy's getting stuck into that already before we've even finished recording. Nick. Despite being off at the weights, so I know it's a stiffer, stiffer five. Democracy Dilemma went a bit bonkers early on, didn't it? Ross Ryan didn't settle it at all. He just went blast on heavy ground and that was it. He had too much on. There isn't a, he's not going to get taken on for the lead and Spencer's probably a better uh, settling a horse, isn't he, in front? Uh, I wouldn't, so I wouldn't sort of, if you wanted to go against it, I'd, I'd put that as a sporting thing, but to say again, I'm not playing myself. I'm just being, I'm, I'm, I'm playing sort of sod's law. I'm saying that it's an awful race. She's going to be held up. There's no power pace, really, and it's one of those awful Saturday, really, everyone tries to banker it, and then you, you're tearing up your tickets, your ackers and your trebles and your doubles, if you want to have a short one in. Mm. So, but that, yeah, that's my thought on what could happen. 
I've got a lot more opinions in other races than that. Yep. <laughs> We're running out of race at this rate. <laughs> It'll all come late. This will be, a, it'll be like a late Trixie, a late Max Bet Trixie. John? This is about one of them nights, isn't it, when the missus is off out to play bingo or something, you think, oh, I'll fucking get it, night in, straight on the coffee table, <laughs> put a bit of telly on, you know. You put the telly on, the only thing you can find is a rerun of how you've been served with a load of molly subbed and pussy jokes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a bit like that. Can't add a lot to the relief rally case, in all fairness. Hopefully, uh, we'll have a bit more magic to sprinkle <laughs> some of the later races. Yeah, he's very tough so far. I mean, like, Don't like, blame us, blame the fucking racing. It is blame the racing and blame the pricing. Risk, risk about this fab. It's where we'd have it, to be honest. I think that's about right. Maybe yeah. 11 or 8, something like that. But it's a boring bet because you're going to have to come from last to first. It's one of them races, isn't it, where like, the mass expanse of Ascot. Yeah, um, gets boxed <laughs> in. Twitter goes with there. And then everybody like, fits f- off for the afternoon. Yeah, you see like five minutes of tweets are like, Fallon, Fallon, yeah. Fallon. <laughs> He's got Mal- that Molly Sugden's up. Molly Sugden's on her pussy. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the card of with more bored of to come in the two twenty five, in my opinion. And this is let's talk about a racing sort of politico here. These horses seem to have been running against each other for most oh, of the mm-hmm. season. It's a bit like what John said about the the Doncaster Cups and the, and these staying races. This is like Phil Mitchell and Ian Bale feud now, isn't it? We're into that <laughs> It is. It's like seeing Pat Butcher and, and Frank behind bar at the uh, the Queen Vic, and it's just the same thing all over and over again. Pat, Pat. It's so boring. Al Arzi and Al Quareem lock swords again, as does Hamish. It's random big bar blitz as to what's going to come in. So, Jack, I'm passing this one on to you because, to be fair, you're our, one of our pinnacle group race experts. And you might actually get more enjoyment out of this than me. Oh, I think it'll be hard-pressed to, to be honest. But I think gun to the head, it would be Hamish for me. Last two starts, I think you can make excuses for the run at Newmarket when he was he was sort of just racing on the wrong side, really. It was a bit of a strange ride that day from Mark Wand. Last time out, I found Bizarre. I was actually really strong on him for the race. Now, he wouldn't have beat Kalpana, who, who ran very well. But he was so weak in the market. Uh, you know, he, I think he was sort of... 15 to 8 out to, you know, SP 7 to 2 and bigger on the machine. So, and that clearly wasn't his running. So someone knew something there. So, you know, possibly is he over the hill for the year? I mean, he's an old boy now, eight years of age, but on his best form, you know, soft ground, course like Ascot should really suit him. Um, and he's a better horse than, than Al Kareem and Al Azi, in my opinion. Al Kareem, I think, probably will try to make all. I don't really like when they do that round here. Um, last year, I think he, he was lucky. There was a couple that bombed off in front in this race that helped him, but I don't see much competition for the pace this year. So I know he stays, but but I think he'll, you know, he'll, he'll probably set the race up for someone else. And, and if we get the real Hamish, I think he'll be the horse who, who picks up the pieces. Mm-hmm. Okay, mate. Hamish for Jacko to uh, banish the last two runs <laughs> and come back. To be honest, Hamish is an horse I never get right. And I, I, I won't even comment on it because I've spent my life laying it short prices and it's just carried on pissing up. The day I say it'll either win, it won't. And if, if I lay it, it'll probably come back winning. So you want me to lay it, Jack, really? Because it, it is my nemesis of a horse. So, yeah, Jack, that helped me there, tipping <laughs> Hamish. John. Well, in fairness, I'll probably be having a having a break from having a break. Well, this, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, only one thing with the the time on my hands prior to this, and I'll try to find something else to do. Well, this is running. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty much like yourself, mate. Like, um, the the three, well, well appear to be three main protagonists. I couldn't get right if. One of these turned up in a walkover, to be honest. I do agree with Jack that there's been excuses the last twice for Hamish. If he doesn't convert tomorrow, I'd be inclined to email the shirt and tell him to knock it on the head with the arse because I'm sick of it. <laughs> his dad owns this, doesn't he? Yeah, he's nearly as old as yeah. his old yeah. man at this point, isn't he? In, yeah, in both yeah. years. He's yeah. old enough to smoke. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, to see Dan Barber. Thank you very much. And, uh, there you go. Bob up. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Nick Dave. Nick Dave. <laughs> <laughs> It's slightly different against the thing. I mean, if you go back to the John Porter, 
I thought that was the day that Salt Bay ran his best race of the year on softish ground, and he goes on softer. And you know, if if uh, Hamish is finally bit the dust, he's only got a neck to find with Al Kareem, and he's going to be about three times the price. That was my only take on the race. His style of running should suit Ascot. Just on price alone, he'd be my tentative pick. I've got a far. I've got my two coming up soon. Good stuff, because uh, we don't want to get to the end of Saturday and say, right, pick out the best bets from Saturday. And tumbleweed <laughs> rolls a- across the ground. <laughs> right, so we're hoping for better. So we move on to the Ben Gostics, the John Guest Racing affair there, the Group 3. Giraffe is at 3 to 1, Fav. Or Giraffe. I don't know, is that Arabic or something? Or is it named after a giraffe? I don't know. It's, it's giraffe if you live near Jack, and it's giraffe if you live near us. <laughs> it is, that's uh, probably. True. Probably yeah. win a yeah. neck, won't he? Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> By a long neck. <laughs> that was awful. Sorry. You're here all night as well. Dan Barber <laughs> and Jack. Oh, yeah, that was very Dan Barber, that wasn't it? Yeah, fuck off, Dan Barber. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, giraffe. That's it. I'm saying it like Bath now. Jack, is it Bath? It's Bath where you live. It's Bath. Yeah, you Bath. Bath. Yeah. It's not Bath. bath. It's not bath. Bath. It's not got two Fs in it. It's got T and H. <laughs> It's like when John says, like with Joe Mason, Mick Baths, not Baths. <laughs> <laughs> Go and ask John Gosden what he thinks it is. He, he, he knows. Yeah. It's yeah. Bar. <laughs> He'll speak very eloquently. Yeah. He'll tell you about his time in America. It's amazing receptacle. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we're losing it, so we'll get back on track with this race. Of course, I didn't think Giraffe would go on the ground. No. Nope. The way that he moves, a bit like a giraffe, really. You know, <laughs> fluent mover on the firm plains of Masai Mara. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, dear, it's going. So I, I just thought that this was wide open for an absolute big result here because English Oak, I think, is levelled out. He's had a busy season, really busy. Like one of them busy things all season. It's like the kilts. It's like the kilts training him. So I just thought there might be something that might be at a price. Maybe I'm a bit disappointed there's been money for Wiltshire because Wiltshire had been one of the candidates. Apollo won, maybe, but again, money for him. Boring. Nick, I'm coming to you because you might have the answers to this. I have Go got the on. answers to this. If someone tells me how Russick Gold is a 20 to 1 shot here when it didn't stay seven furlongs last out. If you look at the last race before at Newmarket, it's ahead of the dream, just behind Quinault. And a line through that, it's got nothing to find with Pura saying, a the dream. And it's 20 to 1, and the dream's in single figures, and so is Pura Sam. Uh, it, as I say, it didn't stay in last time. The Quinault form on soft is sound form. I mean, Night Raiders come out this week and won at Kempton. And I just think this is massive. It's one of my bets of the day. Yeah, Russet Gold. I just had the price. Yeah. I can't yeah. spend 20, 16, 18s. Well, it's interesting how I set that race up. And I thought there'd be prices in this. Something that someone latches onto and you've just done it. You've just proved my point that I think it's that kind of race that can throw up a nice winner here, like at a de- decent odds. So Nick comes straight out of the blocks there. Trap one. Russet Gold around the 20 to 1 mark at the moment. Davis likes there to kick us off. Jack. No, I like that from Nick. I mean, the, the horse I sort of was semi-drawn to was for Dream, personally. But again, that's been bet, you know, sort of eights into sixes now. And that's, I mean, it's it's going to be a, you know, a popular one, isn't it? It's good record on, on shit ground and, you know, decent run in the Spring Cup for fourth. I think it just backed up too quickly last time out. But that horse doesn't win enough or forever, you know, last win in the Palace House last year. Um, so can you really... Can you really go to, to, to leather with that one? I'm not sure. But yeah, if you're using that form line, as Nick says, 20 to 1 is, is massive overs on Russet Gold. Um, I guess I agree with your point on the Fav, uh, Lee. I won't say its name again so we can crack on. <laughs> that will probably come out, won't it? And then that just messes up the whole betting. Um, I, I just can't see them running on, on having a look at today and it being a fluid mover. So does the market look a, a lot different tomorrow? Probably. Depends if Owen Burroughs wants a good butchers at Safi and <laughs> whether it comes out or not. Probably does. <laughs> <laughs> Jonas. I did like Wiltshire at earlier prices, like 11s, 10s, what have you, but 
as per usual, the shirt horse is a big set. The handicap's got slaughtered, hasn't it? So I'd be inclined to rock along with Nick, to be honest. I think he makes a good case for Russell Gold. And uh, we know ground worries. I think you can play a lot worse bets than this at 20 to 1. Yeah, I'd rather be looking for a price in this. So I've, I've mentioned a couple there in Apollo 1, Wiltshire, Jack Likes for Dream, Nick Russick, Gold, etc. I think that's the tactic here, folks. I think the front two, maybe the front three even, are very, very beatable. And you're five to four against the front three in the market. So that might be a way to look at it if you're playing that race. 335 is the BetMGM Challenge Cup. It's a big handicap. 180 bags on offer. 92,000 to the winner. Not to be sniffed at. I'll kick us off by saying what I think. I like Bo Pedro at a price. They ran perfect the one in the Cambridge on the wrong side. I don't think he deserves to be 28 to 1. And if the draw might be against the stand side, stall six might be just okay. We, we don't know how it'll play out tomorrow, Ascot, but that's the sort of feeling there. For you obvious fav backers, there's nothing not to like about Quirat, is there, surely? At six in the Britannia, where they blame the quick ground. They said he'd, he'd have probably won the Britannia if it had been cut in the ground. New market next time, disappointed. But as John says, any horse that runs shit on the Jubilee course, he's not bothered about. He can strike that off. And then last time, Beats Witness Stand, which, of course, beat English up by three lengths and heading for a group two on his next start. Nothing not to like on that handicap in terms of 97. So I've pointed out the obvious. John, I'm going to move it to you. Mersky, I think, has benefited from coming over here and running on quicker ground. So despite the good running at the Clipper, when I backed him, I'm, I'm ruling him out. I thought Bo Pedro ran really well in the Cambridge. Yep. I couldn't rule him out at the price. The one I don't think still of interest after all this time this season is Carry the One. Still had back form in Ireland on soft ground. And soft ground in Ireland would be on a par with heavy air. I don't think he's been disgracing himself at all since the win. I, th- I think there's, there's been a little bit of indication he might even still have some wiggle around with his handicap mark. I, I wouldn't roll him out going close here. You love getting Spencer, John. Yeah. He'll be out the back of John and be going, no, 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 left, 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 no, no. <laughs> but they'll be effing and jeffing like about a furlong out as it can't get a run. And he's like looking for gaps. And it's like, I'll, I'll just probably bite through a cigarette or something. <laughs> right. I'll come to Jack before giving the dance floor to Nick because I know he likes this. There is one I like in here. I think um, I know we're having a bit of a chat off air about is Stan side going to be the place to be? You know, it usually is under these conditions, but today wouldn't wouldn't necessarily state that. But I will pick one that's drawn fairly high, and that's uh, James Tate's United Approach. Um, still pretty lightly raced this thing. And uh, comes here on only its sixth start. And I really like that run over course and distance last time out when second to Lord Bertie. Very unlucky not to get the, the done on a head bob there. But <clears throat> Lord Bertie's come out and run well at Haydock next time out. Um, the fourth looked that smiling one, a decent race. Uh, sorry, ran a decent race in the Cambridgeshire last weekend. And going back his start previous, he was only a couple of lengths behind Make Me King, who's won a, um, a group three out in France since then. So he's got some solid form. Uh, they put the pieces on, which suggests they're probably going to go at least sit handy, which I think is, is the right sort of tactic tomorrow. And it looks like a proper soft ground animal. They pulled him out earlier in the year at Newbury when it was quick. He, he's ran, as I said, good races on similar conditions last time out at Ascot and he won earlier in the year on the slop at Donny. So I, I think he's been a little bit missed by the market and possibly is, is a bit over at around the sort of 14s. Well, that's on the wane, but but 14s general, I think that's a, a very fair price. No, you make some very good points there regarding the ground, etc. United approach. Rusty Lee in the saddle. So I wish you well there, Jacko. So Nick, have you got anything else to blitz us with? Actually, users will be on Golden Mind, I hope. Yeah, which I put up on there. I don't see any reason to change my mind. He acts on if it if it dries up a bit, he acts on that. He's got some some lovely black back class from the vintage stakes last year. He's going to be ridden prominently. Germanic and Mursky are probably going to be the hairs. It depends where you end up end up being. If it ends up being stand side, I think he he takes the world of beating. If Germanic goes up the centre, then it's wide open. I, I don't see them going. I mean, Germanic didn't go a, an awful gallop. He just kicked on from about three or four out at uh, Doncaster. 
and nearly tried to, try to catch them all on the hop, which he nearly did. There's every chance he'll win tomorrow, but I said I've backed it at full scenes and uh, will hopefully collect tomorrow when he picks them up inside the final furlong. Mm, interesting. Yeah, obviously going with your Patreon selection, Golden Mine. Not changing your mind there at all. The price, available around 20 to 1. Will you be sick, Nick, if Rebel Territory shins you on the oh, line? Well, yeah. It's look. It's looked to. It's it's that doesn't look to have at anything when it's been let down, has it? Do you remember? I don't know if I, I don't know if I said this to you last time, but I know you you right. You liked it on reappearance when it was mm. behind Kira because you said it's just a soup monster, and then you liked it next time. And I said I'm worried about Perra on the bounce. She's a terrible trainer off the bounce because she mm. probably gets some fit. So I reckon that's probably run flat. Last time, you know the American system, Nick. Third start off a layoff. Probably do. A, I'll probably do a reverse forecast with Golden Mine then, just to sort of stop Timmy kicking the telly if it chins me. I don't want you saying on, on the chat tomorrow that, that you're very upset after Rebel Territories chin you back because <laughs> I, I know you like this and Musket's the right pilot for this. I like. I like the job. Mm, no, yeah. So that concludes the thoughts for sort of Saturday's race. So, like, chaps. Have we got anything for a potential lucky fifteen bet? What what what's your bet? I think we struggle with that. russet gold. Russet gold for me, even at a right. price. Because you're so strong on that, we'll we'll do russet gold in the lucky then to, to try and boost it in terms of odds. Jack, tough stuff in it, but United approach would be my strongest. But I, I, I totally respect Nick's case for for Golden Mine. But you could always do two variations of a lucky if we've got another two. That is. <laughs> Yeah, John? <laughs> I like Abe's in the big race at Edgar. Yeah. Bill Bull Star, yeah. Yeah, that's all. In the two yard. Right, I we'll put two in then before going into Long Shop Sunday. So it's Bill Bull Star, seven, roughly about seven to two, three to one. And of course, 20s for Nick Russett Gold as we go into Sunday, where we've. <laughs> I'm not. We're not doing the Arab fucking race. Are we? You're, <laughs> that's my nap. My nap goes really. in that. <laughs> Oh, don't you? No, nah, I'm joking. Massive wind up merchant. You <laughs> a funny man, but, but a massive wind up merchant. Right, so. We'll kick off then. If we miss the Arab race off, I'll let you come in because I know you've got something, Jack and Nick, probably off the TV races at Longchamp for any other business. So we'll come to that. So it's 12.55 then. It kicked 12.55. It's, it's win- this is terrible. This is when you get like Kelso starting at 11.45. Yeah, dual screen. It's terrible this now. Winter's coming. Horrible. Everyone's talking about Cheltenham from well, now. And we don't want that. So let's talk about Long Chomp. The boob sack then sees Zari Garner at odds on at four to five. And I thought I'd kick us off here by saying this filly is fucking brilliant. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Watched her twice. Big filly, massive gate, fantastic stride length, and just and just puts racers to bed like I wouldn't say it's like one of them Porsche 911s. It's like a Bentley Continental. Just glides and just goes whoosh. The sectional say she's quick. She's got that ability of which group ones have. Obviously, we know the Grand Dam is Zarkava. This could be the next Zarkava. I'm not overhyping it. I think she's brilliant. Ears were pricked at the line last time as well. Pissing up. Am I a backer at four to five? I'm not a layer at four to five. That's a current price. Am I Am I diving in? I'd rather backer at four to five than layer. Jack? I completely agree with that, Lee. I think we've been blessed with some really good two-year-old fillies this year. Um, and, and this mm. this thing is right up there and could well be the best of them. I, I've been, like yourself, amazed by what I've seen so far. She just looks straightforward. She's she's winning within herself. You know, there's, there's so much more to come, I think. Um, whatever guineas they decide to take in next year, you know, I, I'd make a favourite for it. And um, yeah, I, 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 I think like yourself, I, I was hoping for anywhere sort of around the evens mark would be a big old bet for myself. But, you know, even four to five, maybe 10 to 11, I'd be I'd be all over that, really. I think Bedtime Story got a bubble burst last time out. Um, you know, I don't think I could be with her. I'm surprised they're actually turning her out so quickly after that, to be honest. Um, Simmering is a nice filly, but she, you know, she would always run into one better, I think, in this kind of contest. She probably hits the frame, but I don't think she's good enough to win this. And and outside of that, there's just really not lots to, to worry about in here. Um, so, yeah, I, I think four to five is uh, bordering on being a, a, a decent price for this filly. I think she's brilliant. Lee, what does Ryan do with bedtime story from ten? It's well, a nightmare, isn't it? Got 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 to hold her up. 
she's been keen. I, I would say you've got to try and ride a race on her. I don't know what they've been doing with her because, like, she's been pinging the lids and just, like, running absolutely rabid. So I've absolutely no idea. Like Jack says, you've got to just drop her in, surely. Mm. Aiden said we was very keen to stay. Last time out there, they're not going to be m- making the running with her again. And you struggle to do that from 10 anyway. So, yeah, they'll they'll be wanting to try and get a finish out of her for sure. Mm. And then, obviously... Depends how keen she is, though, isn't, isn't, it? Yeah. isn't it, really? She comes out and sees daylight in front of her and wants to go on again. Ryan's going to have to spend a furlong or two trying to rein her back in. Sure. Jonah? Mm, she won't see daylight in front of her that running she repair. I was going to say that, John. I, I thought I'd been, <laughs> oh, I've been snide enough, so I'm glad you did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> See, we didn't even get a Davis no there. He actually offered something there yeah, on, a, on a two yeah. two year old Phillies race. You've done a Davis and said no. That's it. No, no. You, you've said no. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your opinion on bedtime story, though, John? Wish you an early season, Os. What is it? What, what, where do you sit with her? I don't really see her as a guinea's Os, to be honest. I think. No. I think we may have had all the, all the sunshine that we're going to get in the, in that particular story. Yeah. Developing Joe into a nightmare from now on. I think Zary Garner is a really good filly. <laughs> it nearly floated over, man. It only didn't because producers uh-huh. laughing at your nightmares for bedtime uh-huh. story. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, this show's getting terrible. Yeah, no wonder we're getting <laughs> listeners switching off with these. 1980s, 1990s. Some aren't even switching off. They're just getting up and walking away. Yeah. <laughs> They're leaving it on to annoy the pet. Yeah. Well, you're making producer laugh, so that's something. I never make a laugh. It's a good point to this show. You're making the producer laugh. So we've got a certainty there in the 12.55. Lump on. Responsible gambling. Just lump on. Have more on. Yeah. You want, you want 400, have, have a monkey on and then sit back with a big ball of crazy. Rory, I know you'll be listening to this. I, I don't know what your normal bet is, but times it by 10 and just sit back and, and feel adrenaline through your system. <laughs> feel alive. <laughs> one thirty. Yeah, the Lagardia, I've said it. Feel the goal, three to one market leader with Henry Matisse, one of the first time blinds with Aidan, who has a good record with first time blinds, but not in group ones. He's only one from 30 with first time blinds in group ones, where it was Circus Maximus that did it for him back in the day. Other than that, they all seem to bomb out. It just seems to have made them winners. We ungenuine types have got lots of ability and running against shit at, at Limerick <laughs> and wherever. So Henri Matisse has looked very jady, banging about in the national stakes, going left and right all over the shop. Will blinkers work, Jack? Not for me. Massive, massive cunt, this thing. I couldn't be with it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> no offence, sitting on the nah, show. Nah, I like it. No, nah, no, I, I hated yeah. that last time out. Completely chucked it. Um, and I think we'd had some negatives on it before. So it's just clearly a, a mind of its own, that thing. You know, if if they if they desired to start gelding these, they might actually get even more success because they get a few of these every year, but they just refuse to. So, yeah, you can leave him. I like Field of Gold, as boring as that sounds, um, annoyingly for self-interest. I'd actually backed him a while ago for the Dewhurst, so I was a bit annoyed that they've turned up here. But I like him. I think his form took a nice boost last time out when um, from last time out when Royal Playwright ran very well the Royal Lodge yeah, last weekend. So that reads well to me. I think there's still more to come from, from him. He could be one of the rare sort of shining lights of the Gosden jaded stable this year. I think if you're looking for one at a price and maybe one of the locals, I think Hawk 2, which sounds a bit like Hawk Tour that everyone seems to be saying at the minute from that, that bird in that video. <laughs> yeah, the tick, TikTok woman. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if it was named, uh, it'd be named before her. The issue with this thing is it's just rabid keen. It's a bit like Bedtime Story, actually. Same draw. Um, it, it really needs to settle. That's what got it beat by Coward of the County um, the time before last. But but I thought bounced back last time out fairly impressively in the in the pre La Rochette. If, if that can settle um, and, and get a decent position from a pretty truck, pretty tiff, uh, pretty tough gate, I think that could run a nice race. And it's probably the pick of the the Frenchies here. But but even so, I think Field of Gold is is um, is the right horse to be with, and, and three to one is probably probably about fair in my opinion. 
Yeah, we love a big grey shit out. <laughs> Feel the gold, a Kingman grey. Lovely horse. Won its last two. I can't knock it, really. John, are you a Brian Menis Resha Bar fan? Where are you going with this one? I rather like Misunderstood. I thought this was adequate on debut and then looked as though to take the massive step forward second time out when making all and just drawing clear looked like a proper serious horse as opposed to horses that crack a lot of jokes and aren't serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, which nobody likes, do they? No, this, this one, I, th- I think it's probably been a little bit underestimated coming into this. A little bit of an under-the-radar trainer as regards our books and things. But, as I said, I, I saw this one's a win and I was rather impressed. I'm not convinced by any of ours, really. I think Field of Gold has it in him to go a bit jady. I think Henry Matisse definitely has it in him to go a bit jady. Rasha Bar is Brian Mayen, so... <laughs> you love him, John. Forget that. Jamal Pissarro is a, another River Tiber in the making. Yeah, I don't disagree with I, any of that. I, I think a solid win and place bet in this is misunderstood. I was probably going to have a bit of fun on the front end while all the jerry bastards try to get nerdled into the race. Yeah, no good stuff. Nick? No interest whatsoever on this. <laughs> 205. You might have some interest here, though. Abbey. Oh, yeah, def- definitely. Oh, definitely. I love an Abbey. And it, obviously, the draw's got to play a part. The Abbey. Yeah, the Abbey. Tom Eves has won this twice <laughs> on Tangerine Tree. He owns these. He owns Ryan Moore in this. Washington Heights at 25s, but I like Washington Heights. It just goes forward, bang, low draw. I know it's got a reverse form with Bradson, et cetera, but. I think it gets that inside positive. Tom knows how to win this. He'll be back for a third, and then he'll be the true king of Longchamp. Believing, obviously, if he gets a clear run under Billy the Kid. I mean, she's got a lovely draw. She's surely going to turn it around with Brad, so I think if she gets a trip or just gets the gaps when needed, that's the problem with her. You know, she's going to just need that little bit of luck. So, Nick, what do you think? I think, well, I, mean, I can't put you off, Washington, but I think it... I think he gives a great tote to Starlust, an absolute great tote. I mean, this has, Starlust hasn't got a lot to find with Brad Sauls on the York run. Jockey dropped his reins, didn't it, at York? Acts on, acts on, good, uh, acts on good to stop. Is going to get a toe from Washington Heights. You can see if Believing and Brad Sauls have, I mean, have to come wide and switch around and wider late. This will be in the A1 position, I think, Starlust. And for me, it has to be a better 14 to 1. It will be in the A way. It will be Washington Heights goes off thing. Starlos sits behind there. Kurdos sits there as well. And then if the big two need room to the thing, this this has a this has a real 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 shot at it for me. Love it, absolutely love it. But go against Tom Eves at your peril, as has been the, the case in the past. But have a reverse with Washington, Jack. Well, I've got one for the Tricast then, because I'm with uh, the Channon horse, Desperate Hero. Ooh. Yeah, so this this is a real quick five, isn't it? Probably one of the well, it's, you know, up there with sort of York, really. Um, I think, and and it's all about kind of early tactical speed and getting a decent posse on that rail. He's drawn six. I know he's around the lights of Washington Heights and Starlust, but you'd like to think he, you know, he's very quick out the out the traps. He should be able to get a handy position there. I think he's been unfortunate. He was unlucky at the Curra. Um, he was drawn out in the in the sticks with um with Believing, who obviously finished a few places ahead of him. But um, I think this is the sort of track to be seen to best effect and I'm glad that Brad Sell's got a bit of a shit draw because I think the last two wins have been you know roll out the carpet kind of territory definitely at York and then again last time out perfect draw at the Curra so it'll be a test to see how good that horse actually is and, and for me he's taken up too much of the market believing as a filly I really like and I think she deserves one of these but does she have the tactical speed for an abbe not for me I think that's mm. as a horse that hits a bit of a pocket and kind of finishes you know you, you can see her flashing home um and it's it's probably all 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 uh all too late sort of stuff for me with her so yeah at a bit of a price i think um desperate hero we, we could be on for a mega sort of try here if we're if we're lucky good stuff like it like it so far jonas can you add to the party no <laughs> <laughs> fuck you uh, yeah, pretty much. No, I don't, I don't really have a view on the race, to be honest, other than you probably need a single-figure draw and it gets on my nerves year after year. 
it's even earlier in the card now. I mean, at least back in the day, you could kind of just fuck it off because the arcs already he, done. He, he used to kick. He used to kick out the off, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. They they kind of messed. They've messed around with it, haven't they, over the years? It was the first race, wasn't it? You'd John, I think it was last year, a year before, they didn't even put it on TV. Well, it's the camera no. the camera angle's fucked, isn't it? You can't see anything. So it's a, 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 Yeah, I, well, on ITV, they put it later on in card, I think, or, or something like that. When I went there like, many years ago, last time I went there, I think it was the second race on the card because they they had the boost sack first and then that. You'd rather it 9am or something and we can just get told what the result is because no one, no one wants to watch it, do they? French don't because they don't win it. The, the Brits have just dominated this for Yonks. The two French winners were Wooded in 2020. I think Wizkid in 2012. Going back through March and Door in 2008. Then they had to go to 1996 for the last one before that. And Brits just win it every year. They just, yeah. Seeking in 1977. Yeah, that's right. Clive Britain's won it though. So that tells you all you need to know. Call me Clive. Right, 320, done the Abbey now. We're not doing the Arab race. No, I'm not having any naps in that. No no one's telling me anything in that. I'm not interested in that. It's a disgraceful race. Obviously, we'll be all up gin and painted by then. But the arbitrary of, to finish the televised coverage for the weekend, Los Angeles has been punted into joint favourite with Susie and Luc de Vega. So I'm going to start with John first. Where are you in the arc this year? Yeah, the arc. Uh... Probably out, out the back, pulling up shortly after the winner's unsaddled. <laughs> I, I quite like, is it Serena, Serena Knight of Andre Fabris? Yeah. The steer dropping back in trip. I, th- I okay. think this could take a bit of getting. I think there'll be plenty of pace on. And I also think that this one swerving Cadran and to run in this. I think there's a little bit of value there at 50 each way. 66, so, I think. I, I had a little poke at that. Good stuff, mate. We yeah. like a price. Savannah's night for John. In his notes, he says, an improving horse will be better suited to the way our races are run. So a pace, in other words, to run at. He said he'll stay forever. So, yeah, John likes that one to come fast and late. Right, maybe slow and late, but <laughs> they might all be going yeah. slow by then. <laughs> That. Okay, Nick David. I think Luke de Vega has been given the the old fashioned French prep of uh, uh, winning the uh, French Derby. Then um, he was apparently overweight when he ran third at L- Longchamp last time. To yeah. me, I think he out of the market leaders, he's he's the best of them there. And I think why I think I, I think the French this year. They've shown with their raids abroad that they might be turning a corner into an international competition. So I think they will keep this at home. Must I respect Jack that he's got the value. I don't think there's an outstanding raider here. If they win it, it'll be with because the, the field's bad. I don't think Los Angeles is an outstanding horse at all. But he may be good enough. But for me, Luke de Vega, Luke de Vega's got star quality. Obviously, like we've got the champion stakes form coming into this with Shin Emperor and Los Angeles. Los Angeles ran a blinding trial in the champion. One thing does concern me about him that he hasn't missed a dance. And I just wonder, some horses handle it fine. Some horses have, have run regular and won this. But in general, I do like a lighter prep for an arc than what he's probably had. The Japanese horse ran perfectly well in the champion. But the one I want to focus on, and I still think he's under the radar, is Al Riffa. And I'll come on to this, that I like to follow the, the main three-year-old form line, which is, of course, City of Troy. This shoved it close in the eclipse. It's unexposed at a mile and a half. It won at some Hoppergarten, German, Prise von Baden, Baden, somewhere out in the sticks, pissed up in Germany. But the interesting thing for me, I, don't, I ain't seen mentioned very, very much, is that the dam side on this... And whilst he's won at shorter at two and everything else, and I just think there's more to come because the mother, love on my mind, she was a Darshan mare. She produced Mizu, which obviously won over two and a half miles. Unity was a mile and a half horse. The other one was a black type mile and a half horse. So to me, this could be like massive, massive improvement for Al Riffa. You tack a tacker in the saddle, right, winding back the years for the baby Joseph who's not had the best of years, but this could be the story that Ed Chamberlain needs to get ITV3 flowing on Sunday. They love a story. Al Riffa for me at the prices at 10 to 1. Jack, the dance floor is yours. Well, yeah, this is a, a race I've kind of 
focus a lot of my efforts on for a lot of the year, really. And we had a four horse shortlist um, this year. I'll take you through the ones I've discounted. So Marquise de Sevigna, um, I thought was interesting, but she's out in 16. She's first time over the trip. She's going to have to do a lot of work from there or be dropped out totally cold and, and ridden, you know, through a lot of traffic. So I couldn't have her from 16. Delius was a horse that interested me for, for a long spell, um, but I've come down to the conclusion he's just a big old boat. You know, I think the race was there to be won last time out in the race Nick mentioned, the pre -Niel, Um, and he just didn't have the finishing speed to, to beat Sosi there. Um, and they actually had him entered up in the Melbourne Cup, and I'd probably, probably rather him go there, to be honest. He's a big old slow boat. So that came down to the two from the Irish champion stakes and, and obviously tipped up Los Angeles and, and looking like... I think this horse will go off fav on the UK side. Um, the Japs will, will smash theirs into probably one to two on, on the PMU. But I think for me that, that that form is the strongest on offer in this race. Besides, uh, sorry, aside from what you said, Lee, about Al Riffa, I think that champion stakes run from, from the pair of them was excellent. And, you know, looking at Aiden, he's, he's two arc winners, which is, you know, very low for, for someone of his um, ability. Found and Dylan Thomas both ran in the champion stakes as a prep. Uh, found got beat, Dylan Thomas won. So I, I'm aware that they've had this in mind for the horse for, for quite some time. And um, for me, I, I think, you know, I think drawn 10, loads of pace around him. Uh, the horse John mentioned, uh, Savannah's Knight. Hayes Ark from 13 will go forward. Continuous will probably be gun to try and support Los Angeles. So if Ryan can get a nice sort of mid-div position, the thing about him that I don't like is that he idles a bit when he gets in front. So he's going to have to really time it well and, and just make sure he's, he's getting up in the late stages and he's not wandering out the front. But, you know, I think the race will, will set up really nicely for him. And the Japanese horse I'll have a saver on because, you know, pretty much identical trip that's going to get. It's a full brother to Sotsas, an Ark winner. I think by Saturday, we're probably looking at slow side of good ground there. There's not been loads of rain this week. Um, things are things are drying yeah. up. So I don't think there's a ground issue with, with him that some might qu some some did question before. So, yeah, for me, it's, that, you know, that's the strongest form on offer. Um, Look, De Vega, in my opinion, I'm against. I don't think he stays personally. I, I know he was um, he was overweight for, for that last effort, but he, he was beat quite a long way out there. And I think it's not prep. That it's not a great prep from from my perspective. I think bubble burst a little bit. I know they've come out and said, "Oh, his work was sparkling," but you know, everyone says that. I I, I don't think uh, I don't think he's a true twelve furlong horse, particularly when, as we've said, you know, there's a there's a big old clip here, and um and and yeah. So come to conclusion, it's it's Los Angeles and uh, and a saver on the Jap for me. Good stuff, mate. Shin Emperor and the Champion Six form for Jack. Close the TV cards off. Right. So to add to the lucky fifteen, Long Champ Sunday. What are the best two to put in? Well, the shorty and the boo sack. Yeah, we've got to put we've got to put the shorty French one in. So we've got two bankers in there. Zari Garner, four to five. We've got the red car one on the Saturday and Nick's Russet Gold. So what's the last one to get in the lucky? Well, I could deviate onwards to the opera, where I think I've got a very strong bet in the form of Sparkling Plenty. Yeah. Yeah, so she, she's a price, actually. Six, seven to one at the minute. I thought that run last time out, don't know if you watched it, in pre foi or one of the trials. Pre other... It wasn't given an air, was she? Yeah, the Vermeil. It was It's just fucking ridiculous ride, you know. Never given a chance. Made up loads of ground. Probably about 20 lengths it had to make up and, and made sort of half of them up in, in the final furlong or two there. So, you know, I'm quite glad they didn't go for the arc in the end. I think 10 probably is its trip. It's drawn OK in seven. I think Fallen Angel does have the box seat in two and, and that run was was pretty good in the matron last time out. But, you know, this this filly won the, the French Oaks in serious style. And, and I know she's a filly that we all like. Ran very well in the uh, Nassau and was unlucky with a bit of a shit ride again that day. So she's no seven to one shot for me i'd, I'd have a favorite so um yeah that'd be my offering for the for the lucky i'm happy to put that in to finalize it obviously we're, we're, we're pushed for time so we're going to end it on that note i think sparkling plenty to add to the lucky for jack to finish the bonanza four that we all like chaps i hope you've all enjoyed this show and listeners i hope you have too we've had some fun doing it and hopefully it's a profitable art weekend despite being very tricky early doors the type might be to be produced late like spencer more on on sunday especially the banker in the boom sack that's all from us bye for now <laughs>